Hello, welcome back to another episode of Ubuntu and Open Source. So this is a continuation of Part A. The reason for two parts is Part A is to help you to decide if you if a Linux distribution operating system is for you. If not, there was no reason for you to continue to Part B. Part B is a part of process of helping you to migrate from a Windows or a Mac OS or another operating system to a Linux operating system. And so what do I mean by process? Well, let's take a look. Steps to migrate into the Linux distro OS. What software do you use? Make a list of applications and its purposes. Can you get do work done with an alternative software? Like if you use Microsoft Office or something else, can you use LibreOffice or another software suite? If you use a Adobe Premiere to edit videos, can you use something open source like KDN Live, Lightworks, Blender, Shotcut, or something else? If you are editing photos and you use Photoshop, can you use GIMP, Darktable, War Therapy, Lightzone, or Krita, or any others? Aftershot by Corel is offered. I think they're on version 3 now. And there's, I don't know how you would pronounce this name. The PIXLR is an online editor. And there are online editors that you can use. This is just one of them that I'm mentioning. Would you be interested in trying portable apps while you're currently on your Windows system? Many of the portable apps applications are open source, and many of them will be found on a Linux distribution operating system. The neat thing about portable apps is you install it on a hard drive or a thumb drive. So it's either installed in a folder on your hard drive or you're installing it on a USB thumb drive or a USB hard drive of some kind. And after you get it installed and up and running and using it, you can pick and choose your applications. And it's and if it's that's something that, that application you can figure out is is it for you or not for you if you decide not to um deleting it from the environment of portable apps is just deleting the folder it's not fully installed on your system they they are what called standalone applications which is pretty much a whole nother topic and subject but it it's a temporary thing of using applications from a thumb drive for a Windows environment. They're portable, and they're cool and neat to use. You can use them full time. And if you choose <coughs> that that application is no longer for you, you just delete the folder. Um, Next, after you, you know, familiar, familiarize yourself with some of the open source applications or the alternative software that you choose, that you can get work done on your computer, next would be finding a Linux distribution that you are comfortable with. What do you need to know to find a Linux distro? 
Well, I'm not going to show you how to install a Linux distro because there's many YouTubes out there that show you how to install a Linux distribution from putting it on a CD or DVD and getting it installed into your uh, hard drive on your PC or getting the installer application on a USB thumb drive and getting that installed on your system hard drive. There's lots of YouTube uh, tutorials to show you how to do that. Getting applications installed and or an alternative software. You have to keep an open mind. So if you say you have to have Word, but you don't, Abbey Word or LibreOffice can get the job done for you. You have to keep your options open when looking for alternative software to get work done. If you're used to using a Chrome device, and you say you need to have Photoshop, but you don't, are you keeping your options open for alternatives? So you have to come over that hurdle of that mindset of the operating system that you were using and migrating over to Linux. and their software alternatives. Is it, the next thing would be to figure out, is it easy enough to navigate? Are you comfortable with it? And Linux is not Windows or a Mac OS. Even if you went from Windows to a Mac OS, there's a learning curve. Getting to know how to navigate from getting the applications launched. There are two different worlds when you uh, want to launch a program in Windows and launch a program on a Mac OS. Because either the application on Mac OS is going to be on the dock or you're going to use Finder to find the application that you want to use and launch it from there, which is the same thing as a file browser. You don't do that in Windows. You come to the start menu and navigate to the application that you want to launch. And th so those are two different methods in those two environments of launching an application. And it's going to be the same with Linux. As you can see in my elementary OS, I have a dock that will launch applications. And there's also uh, a menu application launcher here, which in Linux, sometimes it does break it down into categories, but also I can have it just view everything and scroll through my menu application launcher. And you will find that in each Linux distribution, the menu application launcher is going to be different. Not all of them are going to be the same. So it may look different, but it's going to work the same to get the application launched. So what's the same? There's going to be a launcher. There's, there, there's going to be a launcher to launch the application. <coughs> As you can see in here in my Windows application, <coughs> There's going to be a close button, a minimize and restore button, a maximize and restore. There's the title up here in the Windows border. There's a title. And the application's familiarity is going to be the same. We'll file, home, insert, layout, references. What you find in that application on Windows or Mac OS will be the same as for a Linux distro like I have here. 
So as far as this word processor, text maker, it's going to be built the same for you to navigate. It's whatever you want to get done. So, are there things that would be the same but different? In the Linux world and community, it's not called a task bar. It's a panel. So up here on the very top, where it says application, has a date and time, this is a panel. Some things that are familiar is notifications. So over here on the right, all these notifications are still there. And my time in the notif from a Windows environment notification area is over here in the middle. And there's a launcher. So there are similarities, but there are differences. The panel will be different. The taskbar will be different. And it's called a panel in the Linux community. So how do I turn this system off? On this particular system, I come over here. Inside, as you can see, inside the notification area. To lock, to log out, suspend, shut down. My off button is over here. Now on other Linux distros, the off button may be from the application launcher and not over here. So there's similarities and differences. Each system is going to have its own way of changing the wallpaper. So learning how to navigate in each Linux distribution, there's going to be the way you get it done. It may be common and simple like most distros, but this particular Linux distribution operating system is a pretty much of a niche environment where it has some looks and feel like uh, Mac OS, but it's not. So, this is the file browser called Finder. I mean, not Finder. Finder's Mac OS called Files. And you can see I can navigate it just as if it was Finder. It uses columns. Or I can use some traditional ways of, of navigating, like if it was a Windows. Or more traditional of a Linux environment where it uses folders and icons. Navigate it this way. Or I can use the look and feel of what I prefer. Uh, using a file browser like Finder. So, is it easy enough for you to learn how to navigate? You have to keep an open mind. There will be similarities. There will be differences. It's just learning to get around a desktop. Okay. Thank you. And have a nice day.